this is what essentially what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make a demo version for my game so that I can play test what I have built so far. And I hope that with these playtests, number one, I will lose a little bit of my anxiety of releasing my game because I think that my game, well, I just don't want it to do bad and fail. And so I'm currently just trying to make the game as good as possible before we upload it to Steam and make a demo version so that you guys can playtest this. And I got linked a really cool video today, which actually is exactly about that topic playtesting for your game essentially how to get good feedback on your game extra credits and um, yeah i want to watch this and see maybe we can learn something before we embark on that journey one thing that i do know already is that when you want to get feedback for your game one of the things that you can do is uh, you can collect data from the players so you can basically collect some of the data how long they play where they quit uh, how long they take for each level so basic statistics so that you can take a look at okay so why is everyone quitting here uh, but it's always with a grain of salt uh, this stuff because that's just statistics and not basic human feelings statistics don't tell you much about the feelings that people have and so maybe they can go a little bit deeper let's see here Can I just say that I nailed this intro like a f boss? Oops. Playtesting. Okay. The playtest is one of the most important parts of game design. Yes. But it's also one of. It helps you iterate. We learned that. Hmm? The hardest things to do well. There's really? a lot more to getting useful data out of your players than simply sitting them down in front of your game. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to talk about playtesting. Though I think that the best type of feedback I've gotten uh, on a playtest is someone making a video of my game and playing it. And uh, the, he was so frustrated with my game that he quit, I think, like two or three, five minutes in. And that told me a lot about what I needed to change in my game. Now, this isn't the same as the bug testing that you would do if you're a professional tester. Yes, so like Ebef says it right, we need to implement a keylogger so that I can get all of your passwords. And so what I do then is I log into your Steam account when you play my game, right? And I make you buy my game in the future. So I'm going to bring out a demo version. I'm going to keylog all of your passwords and stuff like that. And then later on when my game is released and I, I, you know, I spy on you and I see that you didn't buy my game, this is when I buy my, ga buy my game from your account. Hmm? And then I'm going to write a positive review for my game. Okay? So, yeah... That's essentially what we need to do. I'm talking about the user feedback type of playtest that designers do to help us understand the real quality of our games. Unfortunately, many young designers seem hesitant to go out and playtest. They often feel like their work's not ready to show yet. Or yeah, I have that anxiety. So he's right. I have this anxiety a lot. And I think it's basically like we said earlier, playing ranked in League of Legends. You just have to do it. Then the anxiety will go away. Because ultimately, I think the anxiety comes from not being able to change that in the future. So what that means is people see your game, they made up their mind about your game, and they move on. And you basically have lost that player forever. And people are so sad or so... At least I have. You have anxiety of that happening, so you don't bring out your game early enough. Because you think it's too bad. Yeah people just won't get it or the playtesters are only going to give them feedback they already know this or is not a fake reaction this looks like uh, it's a seamless stream react stream react no it's, it was actually seamless it per fit perfectly today anyways let's move on here ready to show yet or that people just won't get it or the playtesters mm -hmm. are only going to give them feedback they already know or maybe it's just that showing your work to other people is really tough it's like reading them no i don't have that at all I don't know why, like, I wonder why he's not going into this. I don't have this at all. I have the problem that I don't want to lose the first impression. I think that, yeah, the game's not good enough yet. I've never had issues showing my game. It's more so losing the player base because they hate it. Your poetry or playing him a song you wrote. By conducting a playtest, you're kind of putting yourself out there. The first major yeah. challenge in a designer's career is to overcome this shyness. To fully mm -hmm. invest yourself in your work without getting your pride tangled up in it. At playtest, mm -hmm. people will say negative things about your design. They yep. will tell you all sorts of things you already know should be in your game, but that the team just... You know, it was tough to watch, but this is what happened to me. This review is brutally. I look at, I listen to the sound of his voice, 600% volume. Let's see. I didn't click there. That's the thing. Yeah, so here's what happened. 
He continuously placed units behind the bar. Let's see here. And so the very first feedback I got was, don't make units placed behind the bar because he continuously placed them behind it. And he got so annoyed by this. See this? Great QA cakes. Yeah, I didn't think that would happen. You know, didn't think people would do this. And then... Wow, there we go. Yeah, so it took him like one so to two minutes to get it done, and he's so annoyed. <laughs> All right, well, this is just a demo, so... It was oh, yeah. brutally honest by him, and that was the best review I've gotten so far. One of the best, because it made me change my game a lot. I think this is the best thing you can get. Let's haven't see. haven't gotten to yet, or you simply don't have the budget to do. But it's important that you don't reject any of this feedback. Don't mm -hmm. get defensive or try to explain to the player no. what will eventually be. I think this is what weak people do that put their efforts, or let's say they put their outcome onto other people. I think even if you get negative feedback for your game, there's always something you can do. If you start to blame others for the feedback that you get, then you're on a lost cause. The game, just embrace it all openly. Write it all down and yep. really listen. Because yep. all of this information has uses. And you have no need to justify yourself to anyone. Your only job is to put out a good game. Oh, and the only yeah. way to do that is with feedback. Yep. So once you've steeled yourself for all the criticism to come, the second thing to know about playtesting is that it is never too early to do it. As soon as you have a prototype, as soon as you have squares moving around on the screen, you can test. In fact, James... Will yes, yes. This is the number one thing. If you guys, or if anyone, you're making a game... And you have the budget to spend $100 for Steam? Do it. Make a demo on Steam. I think that's the number one thing everyone should do. That should be the number one focus. You can have a demo up and running if you're reasonably experienced in making a game in like one, two, three, four months. That should be enough time to have a demo up on Steam and tell you early enough that your game is something that people want to play or not. And if it doesn't, then you can get feedback from the numbers that Steam gives you, how long they play and uh, stuff like that. The wishlist count is also a good indicator. And you don't need to have the perfect store page. You just need to have a demo version out that showcases your game. Yeah, it took me two years to get to that point too, I know. But I had a demo version out before, and that gave me enough feedback to change my game drastically, Oshi. And I don't think that version looks much better, because it was really visually polluting. This style looks good, I agree with you, but it's too visually cluttered to be a tower defense game. Because we'll tower defense games get cluttered just by being tower defense games. It's going to be so much happening on screen. You cannot have the background take all of the attention away. It needs to be on the units. And so for that, the background needs to be simple and not high detailed. Well, before he's even got anything digital to work with, creating a prototype out of a deck of cards or even getting a bunch of people to run around a room can yield valuable data. Many times design students will tell him when they go to playtest early in the dev cycle that all anyone tells them are things they already know. But mm -hmm. that just means they aren't looking at all the data. As a designer, you have to observe everything. If mm -hmm. all you've taken down are just the words your testers said, you haven't looked closely enough. The order that people give their feedback in is almost as important as what they're actually saying. It tells you... Oh, I see. So the first thing people say is the one thing that pisses them off the most, or the one thing that they hate the most of the game. And so that should be the one. If you hear the first thing they say or is always the same thing, thing then maybe you should change that. What's That'd most be like a high priority. And where in your experience they encounter these issues. Okay. And make sure to listen closely. You are going to be naturally biased about your game. You have a set of things that you know are wrong with the game that are on your to-do list to fix. So when a tester describes something similar to a problem you already know about, it's remarkably easy to subconsciously think, Oh, yeah, yeah, I know about that one. Already taken care of it, no problem. When they actually might have been talking about a different problem entirely. Additionally, early testing gives you data that you're going to need for later. Each time you test, you're going to see if the adjustments you made to the game made the issues you encountered better or worse. Mm -hmm. To do this, you need as many data points as possible. The longer your trend line, the more in-depth your understanding will be. Okay. And one final word about early testing. You may be wrong about your game. Embrace that. You may well find that what you thought was the core engagement of your work wasn't what people actually found engaging. Don't reject that. That is the most valuable. Yeah. Yeah. To give an example of what I had... For me, these units would use abilities like in an MMORPG or in a mobile game like League of Legends. And so let's say you had this guy right here, the Tanji. Uh, you would use abilities with the Tanji like you're playing, let's say, Vayne and bottom lane. That would be like four abilities. Then you would switch to that Tanji and do the same thing. And so you were busy 
cycling through your units and using these abilities yourself. And so you, I basically turned a MOBA where you focus one hero into a MOBA where you focus on 10 or 100 heroes. And that was so bad that it was way too overwhelming for the player. And I had to remove it. I thought this design was glorious, but it wasn't. It was bad. Valuable data you can get. And as anyone who's built a game will tell you, the earlier you make changes, large or small, the cheaper it is to make them. Don't cost everyone else on your team weeks of work just because you were afraid to play test early. Ah, I mean, I've done that to myself, so... <laughs> Alright, now let's go over a few quick and dirty rules of how to test. Okay. First, try and talk to your players as little as possible. Anything okay. you say to them biases them and prevents you from getting good data. True, true. So that's why I'm looking for feedback from my wife. She hadn't played the game in a long time. She's not a gamer. And, and I didn't tell her anything about my game. She will tell me how difficult and how confusing my game is. Not biased at all. You guys are all biased. I know that. You're going to give me terrible feedback. I need some other players, you know. Maybe you guys on YouTube can do that. You may not feel the, the toxic need to explain ones. your game before starting, but resist that urge. Let them take a crack at it before you tell them what they should be doing. Yep. This will allow you to observe what they naturally want to do in your experience and gives you a better sense of where they get stuck or what needs to be explained. Yep. Once they've had a go or two, then you can inform them. And when observing them, listen carefully for when they vocalize. Anytime your game draws an utterance from them. A mm -hmm. sigh, a gasp, a thoughtful, hmm. You've either done something right or something very wrong. Oh, yeah. The guy that played my game yawned a lot, so I guess my game was kind of boring, huh? <laughs> Put him to sleep. But try and see where they spend most of their time looking in your game. Yeah. It'll give you deep clues into what they feel is important and what data they felt like they had to spend most of the time processing. Mm -hmm. Admittedly, this can be a very hard one to do, and you'll often have to resort to asking the player, unless you can get all high-tech and have a camera set up to record the session. Additionally, create a test survey rather than trying to get everything from simply talking to your players afterward. This will not only allow you to get data from a lot more people at once, it's also... Shouldn't the, like, okay, I mean a survey? So basically a survey at the end of the, let's say, demo version, where the player gets asked a bunch of questions, what he liked, what he didn't like, how engaging he found, found the game, stuff like that. That's something worth writing down. I didn't think about that. Making surveys is hard. Yeah, survey is... Writing the, down the correct questions would be a difficult one. Right? Survey is quite common even between levels and chapters. Yeah, Code and Grey? Okay. Code and Grey has been working in the gaming industry for a long time. So I trust this word there. Okay. Yeah, I'll think about it. Maybe we can add that for the demo. Sounds like a good idea. Do you like the game? Yes, yes. <laughs> exactly. Unbiased data that can be cleanly turned into metrics if you give your playtesters a 1 to 10 scale question, which I ah, highly okay. recommend doing. It puts so less more like yes, no, not like this, but more like between 1 to 10. I think, so you know how these surveys say strongly disagree, slightly disagree, neutral, strongly agree, or agree and then strongly agree. I don't like these. Like that's one out of five. I think one out of 10 is much better. One out of 10 is subjective, yes, but I think it's it gives you a higher range than just one out of five. It's of a burden on your play tester than making them write out whole paragraphs. Zero on all fronts. And it gives you okay, an easy well. way to know if you're making changes for the better in future tests. Mm -hmm. Just watch to see if the numbers trend upward or down. Just be sure to leave the play testers room. It's definitely worth something checking, worth checking out. Yeah, one out of 10. We'll try this, I think. If I have the time for the demo version, I'm going to add this in. For comments at the end, too, because that's also helpful. When 10 you out of 10 is the best, brother. One is the worst. Your testers, just be aware that as human beings, we all have a tendency to jump to solutions rather than stating the underlying problem. So mm -hmm. when a playtester offers you a solution, like there aren't enough power-ups, really dig in and try to establish what underlying problem they're trying to solve. Because you'll that? often find it's something else, like my gun doesn't feel powerful enough, <laughs> which may require a totally different solution than the one they offer. <laughs> Lastly, be aware okay. that we're all hardwired to avoid suffering. So make sure you're testing in an environment where your tester feels okay walking away from your game. If you lock them in a room or even have them in I a... I mean, that's basically a Steam demo. They can walk away anytime, yeah. ...an environment where they feel socially compelled to play, they'll try to make the best of it. They'll try to get into your game. And mm -hmm. that'll deny you one of the most important data points you can get, where your player gives up on your game or walks away to do something else. Remember, when you launch your game, you're not only going to be competing with all the other games out there, but with every book, every movie, every TV show, even the... Yeah, but listen, like, this... Like, the gaming industry is the biggest industry in the world now. Like, even bigger than movies, so... He's right there, but it's like 12 years ago, right? Yeah. Uh, things have changed, brother. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The We're going to gonna compete so with games. Hollywood is dead. And if Trash. you don't have to worry mm -hmm. about NDAs, it can often be fun to grab several of your other game-making friends and test as a group. That at least gives your players other options for what to do with their time. 
before we wrap this up, let's talk. You know about why this video is so good, by the way? Well, you know, very coincidence because it was twelve years ago, back then when people focused on making good games instead of you know putting Black Lives Matter first into a game like Assassin's Creed, so they have a cool character that's black. Not who mm. to test with? Test this is with when every people were actually trying to make good games. Everyone, but know that the test results you get vary in value. For example, you are the worst tester of your game. You're just too close to it. You're naturally yeah. going to test your own game a thousand times over the course oh, of its yeah. creation, but True. that sort of testing only goes so far. There's all sorts of things that you're going to get used to, things that will become second nature to you that will seem totally alien to anyone picking up your game for the first time. So mm. you need other people. Oh, and as a rule of thumb, if you think the difficulty on your game is, is just about right, a, rule is, of thumb... Is that actually a thing? Does this exist in real life? Who puts a thumb in the city, bro? What the... Where is this? Which city is this? <laughs> Interesting. I mean... Uh -huh. If you think the difficulty on your game is just about right, it's probably way too hard. Next. My game's too difficult. I know that, yeah. I can't beat my game. Family mm -hmm. and friends. Second worst testers. They're biased. They can't help it. Next mm -hmm. comes the hardcore. Hardcore players are often the most willing to test, but unless they're the only audience you're looking for, and they are a niche, you need to find other testers too. As hardcore players, we simply have too much ingrained in us from the thousands of hours we've spent playing these things. Oh, yeah. You're really looking for people without preconceptions or biases. People who like games, but aren't in any way invested in them. You're Stri looking at the people that quit 10 minutes in. You, you want to make sure that not too many of those people quit because the hardcore players are going to push the end result time way higher. You're going to have like the majority of people... It's going to be like this, and we've seen, we've seen this before, but it's actually going to be something like this when it comes to playtime. Uh, if this is, uh, you know, when people quit, and let's say this is zero minutes, and this is, I don't know, 10 hours plus, then it, the curve will look something like this. It goes up with the hardcore players. These are the hardcore players. They, they exist in this spectrum here. And so... You want to make sure that this curve right here is not too flat. This is like a bad curve because it goes down too quickly. You want to make sure that this curve like somehow is not as steep. That's what you want to target for because this is where you have like zero minutes. That's bad. You want to keep as many of those as possible. Strangers who owe nothing to you or better still know nothing about you. So who makes the best tester? Well, in my experience, Steam. little kids. They may not be your audience, but if they are, you can always count I have a four-month-old baby. So I need to somehow make her grow up faster so she can test my game. Okay, good. Good to know, yeah. Done uh -huh. that to be open, eager, and 100% honest. Well, I hope that was useful. Good luck honing those games to perfection. We'll Thank see you. you next week. Thank you, sir. Well, so what I take away from this video is uh, maybe a survey. And yes, he's right there, bringing out a playable slice for your audience or for like uh, for your game and test it on Steam. I think that's the best thing. You can start with itch.io. If you get a couple of comments on itch.io and a decent amount of downloads and views, maybe it's worth putting it on Steam if you can afford the hundred dollars. And then, excuse me, and then test there. I think uh, yeah, it's a good video. Uh, if you want to support these guys, I think uh, they do make some really good videos. Uh, I think they have stopped making videos. Is it true? No, they're still making 600 videos. Looks like they're still making... Yeah, they're still making videos. Okay, cool. Choice architecture. Manipulation of fun and profit. Extra credits. Ah, these are the in-game purchases. Ah, I see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very nice. Okay, cool. I'm going to subscribe. Maybe they have some good videos too. And uh, if you want to support them, again, uh, watch this video. Or go to the video and watch this full video in like 1% volume. That's the best way you can support them.